Wondering if Challengers is for you? We're going to give you all the most important points that you need to know if this is a movie that you'd enjoy and we'll conclude with the mate night score. Challengers is a movie released in April 2024 starring Zendaya and directed by Luca Guadagnino, who you might know from Call Me By Your Name. The film follows a 15-year-long love triangle between three career tennis players, exploring the dynamic between sport, success, and sexuality. Now this leads to the most important thing that you need to know. This is not a tennis movie. If you are hoping for a tennis movie, you will be disappointed. Now you might ask, do you need to know anything about tennis to understand this film? In short, no. However, there was some scoring which might help to understand. Fred, why don't you give us a breakdown? So, a tennis match is split into points, games and sets. And in the movie, the scoring is referenced through a scoreboard that they have in the bottom and top. Each of the red columns is a set. The numbers within those columns are representative of the games that are played. To win a set, you need to get to six And you must win by two clear games. So, for instance, you could win 6-4. You couldn't win 6-5. The aim is to win two sets. You can largely ignore the grey points that are on the right as they don't become that important. Okay, now here are some other points which we think are important. The plot unfolds in a non-linear manner, exploring the backstories and emotional stakes of the characters. Although this structure adds complexity... I thought it could also make the narrative feel tedious and convoluted. Whereas for me, I actually, part of the real um, enjoyment I got from the film was that narrative chop and change. I thought it really packaged it nicely and made it a very interesting watch. So we both say between us when we discussed it, for some people they'll really like that and maybe for some it's a bit too much just be aware that it's there's a it's a non-linear narrative and there are a lot of steps in that narrative it jumps around a reasonable amount and on our discussion we kind of realized that some people picked up things that others missed and and you probably will find that there are things that go by you i think generally as well across the board this is a very interesting movie and this is quite representative of that now sexual dynamics The film features a notable amount of sexual tension in various interactions, which is unusually high even for a romance film. These elements might catch some viewers off guard. We've discussed that it's not a tennis film, and you basically said it's a romance film with... It's not... The the horniness isn't the narrative. Yeah, it's important to know you will probably have your expectations subverted depending on what you think of this film. When I went into it, I was under the impression that it was a horny film based on a review that I read. Um, Jamie thought it was more a tennis film based on watching the trailer. The impression we got from it was slightly different. I didn't feel like it was overtly horny and Jamie didn't feel like it was anything to do with tennis, really, which would be right. Um, Just know that there are horny elements. Some of them are quite well done and are very interesting. Sometimes it seems a bit shoehorned in but doesn't necessarily lead to anything overtly sexual. Uh, just know that there's this undercurrent that's bubbling throughout. And I think that it is, it's present in every interaction. Yep. It's quite important. And sometimes it really works and sometimes it feels like unnecessary. And bordering on sometimes a bit uncomfortable, maybe yep. not intentional. But unintentionally, yeah. The character depth. We thought the characters are depicted with a mix of good and bad traits, which made them complex and engaging. Their development is well executed, allowing even antagonistic characters to be likable and entertaining. Now, we were saying it it created with this love triangle dynamic and the complex characters, there was a lot of interpretation and discussion. There was a lot to talk about afterwards. Yeah, for sure. That was one of our most interesting side effects of the conversation we had was we were very surprised by which avenues it took us in because we both had very differing interpretations of the characters it clearly gives you a lot of food for thought which if you're watching it to have a good conversation you'll come out of it with that yeah 100 percent. and again to reiterate the point it's it it is an interesting movie i went into this expecting Mm, something run-of-the-mill romance and uh, almost every level sometimes it's the making of the movie sometimes it's very much not the case but it's always interesting it's Mm. a very interesting movie um acting highlights zendaya delivers a compelling performance bringing depth and authenticity to her character which stands out as a highlight of the film generally i'm not the biggest fan of zendaya's acting i like her she's really really cool but i generally don't find that much range in her performance I felt confident in saying I quite liked her performance in this. And I think you were the same, right? Yeah, I'm similarly of the same impression of Zendaya where 
really like her. Never really been blown away by any of her performances, but was very pleasantly surprised for a few of the acting beats she had here. Thought she really nailed it. Also, Josh O'Connor's character, Patrick Zweig. I think Josh did an amazing job with his performance. Great character to amazing character. to enjoy and, and to play. Um, still, he did a fantastic job too. Visual appeal. The film showcases a modern, visually engaging style with saturated colours and inventive camera work. While many shots are creative and enhance the narrative, others can feel cheap and nauseating, affecting viewer comfort. So again, this is the same thing that keeps coming up. Uh, sometimes visually, very, very... Uh, sometimes visually, it's great. Sometimes visually, it's very questionable. And mm. But it's never, it's never not interesting. Yeah, you felt sometimes like Luca was being a bit of a kid in a candy store where he wanted to have everything at once. And sometimes that worked really well. And given the nature of what he was discussing, you he gets away with it more than he doesn't because it's such an animalistic um, theme. However, sometimes when it came to the visuals, some of the shot selection and also the um, music, it, it didn't seem to work for us. Yeah, 100%. On the audio experience, for those interested, it's a mix of synth, dance, and uh, church music, choir music. We're in Latin language, so there's that very stark juxtaposition between the two kinds of very modern against very traditional, which is a theme throughout. Um, it dominates the auditory landscape. While the soundtrack aims to enhance scene transitions, its volume can sometimes drown out important dialogue, detracting from the clarity of the narrative. Now, I am somebody who sometimes struggles to hear conversations in films and this was a problem in one or two scenes in this film for me, but it wasn't so much for you. No, I, I don't recall having any moments where I couldn't understand what they were saying. However, there were points where I felt like the decision to add particularly the dance music, which is a motif he uses throughout, um, was misused and, and didn't really fit with the scene. On that note, there is a constant thematic juxtaposition between traditional and modern and this is apparent throughout the whole movie and the best observation which the channel who pointed me towards this will be linked below pointed out that this romance plot follows a very non-traditional tr love triangle in the context of one of the most traditional sports there is, which mm. is tennis, where it's all about etiquette and custom and it's one person against another person. And that juxtaposition comes into the music, comes into the story. It's it's there throughout. Yeah. And I made a point when we discussed it in a bit more detail, which I'm not sure if, it, if this is tied to the traditional versus non-conformist um, juxtaposition that Luca was trying to go for. But I did notice in the film that the country club that they're at for this challenger tournament and um, typically maybe stereotypically this would be a very white dominated environment and demographic whereas it was really noticeable to me how it really was kind of a very diverse. mixed very diverse and um, so that could have been something that luca was going to to tie to that point it could have just been a happy coincidence it's a very interesting theme throughout mm -hmm. whatever the case um and the last couple of things that we probably want to touch on the humorous elements, whereas throughout this whole film, Luca was like a kid in a candy shop. He was going crazy on everything. And sometimes it, it felt a bit over the top and a bit overused, say in the cinematography. The humor was probably one of the most carefully and tastefully added things to this movie. And we both really thought it was great. There were just a couple of moments here and there where they went for a joke and it landed, but it never detracted it never took away from the focus of the film and the narrative as a whole yeah it was really it was really nicely done from a humorous standpoint um <laughs> a lot of the film is a case of giving you know going for too much and and one of the things that it really did a good job of easing off the gas on was any of the funny elements they didn't really miss any jokes that they tried and they did have some genuine laughs that came through the last couple of little details. I thought Zendaya's outfits throughout the hot, the wardrobe was just insane. It was the coolest outfit. Selection. I didn't notice it at all. Unsurprisingly, Fred did not notice it. Fair enough. If you like that sort of thing, she looked really, really cool throughout the whole movie. And that added a bit to me. There was some sexual stuff which we thought wasn't supposed to be funny. And mm. it was bizarre enough that I think you said you were kind of laughing at it a bit. You can almost enjoy it as well. It doesn't necessarily detract from the film, but I don't think it was what he was going for. But you, we can't really go into it without spoiling. So basically, 
you're going to get to a point where you're going to find interesting reactions that you're having to this film. So on the whole, I think uh, we both quite enjoyed this film. We've landed on a May Night score of 7.34 out of 10. Um, generally across the board, the scores that we gave it landed around the seven or eight mark, but it wasn't because it was average. It was because it was really, really good at times and, and also really, mm. really bad at times. And then they kind of had to even each other out. Um, so 7.34 out of 10, that puts it as the 17th greatest film of all time. Is there anything else you want to add? Until further notice. Until further notice. Thanks for listening.